Hey guys, I'm back, and um, right now we're going to be interfacing to the um, easiest, one of the easiest things to build really cool gadgets that your friends will love to interface to. It's an iPod. So, what I've built here is a case, right? It's got the regular iPod case, but on the back is a custom charger. So, you can put the iPod into the case. Sorry, it's kind of weird doing this from behind the camera. Um, I guess all of those of you who've made movies know. And then, um, once it's on, there we go. Alright, so you see, the iPod does indeed fit in the case, in case any of you wondered. And on the back is this. It, it looks kind of uncomfortable to use, but not really. It, it, it's not too bad. Anyway, um, the way it works is, I know this watch is weird, I'll explain it later, it's from the Kenneth Finnegan blog, you can check it out, right now it's just a harmless 9 volt battery, okay, so if we plug the 9 volt battery into the case, it will, right here, you see it's on the side now, it's plugged in, right, the case is now regulating the 9 volts of the battery down to 5 volts, and you see that USB connector at the bottom, this USB cable will plug in, and if we plug into our iPod, voila, you see, charging. I'm not sure if you can see that charge icon, but you probably can. But anyway, you notice that when I unplug it, the screen goes blank, and when I plug it in, the battery charging thing up here, so it is indeed charging it. Um, so I'm going to get the circuit here in a minute, but after my camera falls off my desk. Anyway, this is really useful because not only can charge your iPod, but it can charge anything that charges over USB, much like my car charger, except it's a much smaller, more compact version. Also, this USB port doesn't work because a 9-volt battery won't have enough power to charge multiple items at once, so don't even bother. Okay. But anyway, here's a schematic for the circuit. It's a very simple. You have your 9 volt battery here, a 7805 voltage regulator. Sorry about that pixel right there. I don't know what's up with that. If anybody can help me explain that dead pixel right there, I would really appreciate it. Anyways, I'm not sure if it's dead or what, but um, difficult to see now, but easier to see now. Anyways, we have two filter caps. So uh, you all uh, have presumably watched my voltage regulator tutorial, or if not, are familiar enough with voltage regulators to know how they work. So this regulates the 9 volts down to the 5 volts. We have two filler filter caps here, a 0.1 microfarad and a 10 microfarad. Um, these ensure that the power going to the iPod is nice and clean. Very important. Then this is the USB connector here. As you can see, the 5 volts and the ground are connected to the USB connector. And then this is the part which gets you know, a bit complicated. It is what to do with the data lines. Um, sorry, that won't focus. Anyway, Adafruit has a great blog entry on this. If you search Adafruit Minty Boost um, USB charger or something, I forget what exactly you search. Adafruit Minty Boost resistors. You'll get their full blog explaining what they had to do. But essentially, on the original iPods nothing was connected to the data lines. As you're familiar, USB has four cables that run through it, power, ground, which are simple enough, and then data plus and data minus, which are these two right there. I have them connected together. That's where the data is transferred. So uh, originally, all iPods would charge without the data lines connected. Then they needed like 3.3 volts, and then they needed something. Anyway, to get the two volts, which is required, basically, you can, you're supposed to run it at like 2.6 or 3 volts or something, per data line, but um, if you run it at 2 volts, which is a bit lower, it will charge at a lower uh, current rate, which means it charges slower, but um, it's a lot easier on the 9 volt battery, <coughs> Excuse me, which can provide a lot less current. So the resistance you want to get is connected to power, you want 82K, then connected to ground, you want a 56K, and in the middle connect both data lines. The both data lines can be connected together. It works fine. Anyway, that's the entire schematic of this. And this is just simply a battery pack, one of which I have here. 
the circuitry is just inside the battery pack and then the battery pack's built-in 9 volt connector serves to connect the 9 volt battery outside. It's hot glued to the case and that just makes it really handy. Obviously it's only meant for right-handed because the battery, the 9 volt sticks out on the left side and it can also charge phones and anything that charges over USB is just handy for an iPod because this is the iPod case. Anyway, um, yeah, that's really all. It's it's really simple to build, really easy. You just assemble this circuit that I have here. Um, obviously, it, this won't be in the file section of my website since you can see it perfectly here, and it's really simple. Anyway, that circuit's in here. You just plug in the 9-volt battery and plug in the USB connector, and you're ready to go. So, really simple to build. Um, both these resistors are in the SparkFun Beginner's Resistor Kit, or whatever it's called, so you can get those resistors there. And um, you can modify this to work on uh, double A's as well as um, as you can see this one that I built for a friend. This one has a power light, um, has a switch to switch it from fresh double A's. Uh, basically, you can run fresh four fresh double A's is enough for a low dropout regulator, an LDO low dropout regulator. Um, an LDO 7805 to drop it down from 6 volts to 5 volts. Um, so that will work, but that's only for fresh batteries. For dead batteries, all you have to do is put a, um, a diode. Just make sure that you're not using fresh batteries, otherwise you'll fry your iPod. If you're unsure, just don't use AA's at all, and use a 9 volt. Obviously, you're going to get about uh, 3 quarters to a full charge out of a 9 volt. Also, for some reason, the circuit does not work with rechargeable batteries. I don't know why, but it doesn't. It only seems to work with alkalines. Um, if you find a lithium 9 volt battery, good luck with that. Um, anything over 6 volts should work. You can try 6 volts, but it's unless, unless it's a low dropout regulator. Good luck. So, thanks for watch watching. Comment, rate, subscribe. Go to the website. Yeah.